Hello audience, and here we have a Ford Model A generator. Now this one is the latest design I believe. It's got a bushing on the back instead of a ball bearing, and it's got the short nose. Now it currently doesn't work. Now it's been rebuilt before, probably back in the 70s I'm guessing, because it's got new fields in it and it looks like the armature has been rewound. Now, when I first got this, it didn't work at all. I tried motor testing it and it wouldn't spin. And what ended up being the problem was the third brush, the one that powers the fields, was grounded. It was missing an insulator. So I installed that and this is working perfectly for about an hour and it quit charging. What I think happened is the commutator got dirty. I don't know if you can see that from there, but it was spotlessly clean before. So either the brushes are disintegrating or it's getting grease on it from the bearing. I don't know, but I'll go through that. Another problem it has is the front bearing is really worn out. And you can kind of hear it squeaking a little, but when this one's on the car, it was squealing like crazy. I've never heard one this loud. And I tried recording it, but Naturally, the second I turn the camera on, it quiets down. Anyway, I got a new bearing. I'll install that. And I got a new set of brushes in case they are falling apart. And if these do the same thing, I can put together a set of originals. So, first thing, I'll take it apart. Yeah, look at that. Also, you can see how worn out the bearing is. And here's the brushes. Now, as I suspected, I must have over oiled it because there's oil and grease everywhere. It's probably supposed to be a seal in here that's not there. Now this is the insulator right here that I said was missing. Now this brush and this one are supposed to be insulated from the housing whereas this one is supposed to be grounded. This one here is wired to the terminal on top of the generator and supplies power for the car's electrical system. Or I guess you could technically say it takes power away because it's positive ground. This brush does the same thing except it supplies power to the fields. Now this is how you adjust it. This is what I think is really clever about it. This one can be moved and when it's really close to the brush that supplies power to the car, it's getting almost the same amount of power. And that's when the generator charges the most. The further you get it away from it, the closer you get it to the ground brush, the less power goes through the fields and the less magnetic force there is and the less power the generator puts out. So with normal operation, you adjust this to the range that you need for your style of driving and it puts out a constant amount of amps. So next I'm gonna take this apart, degrease it, and put the new brushes in. And another thing I noticed is some of these brush holders are bent probably from over tightening. So I'll see if I can fix that. All right, took it apart, degreased it. It's looking pretty clean now. Also straightened out the brush holders a little. 
and that's the third brush. Now these tensioners that go on here that hold this, they should be tightened just so the third brush is easy to move but stays put where it is. Now whoever put this together last time they had these down really tight and you couldn't move this at all. It's another problem I had with it. But that was easy to fix. Also, I used a little solvent on the commutator and that cleaned up really easy. Could be a little cleaner, but that should work the way it is now. So I think that's all that was wrong with it. It was just a little bit greasy. And here's the housing. So you can see the wires look pretty new, so I'm guessing it's got new fields in it. Now whenever these are rebuilt, I kind of worry because sometimes the people who rebuild them, they don't know they're supposed to be positive ground and they wire them up wrong. But this one was working, so I'm sure it's wired up properly. Now, see if I can dig the bearing out of this. Okay, it looks like the brushes are not contacting very well, so I'm going to take it apart again and seat them a little better. I motor tested it and it seems to work, so throw it back on the car and see what it does. Alright, it's back on the car. Now, I lift the cap off the cutout so we can tell if it's working. If it gets, if it charges above battery voltage, the points will close on it, so it'll be pretty obvious if it works.
set the current up pretty high so again it'll be pretty obvious if it works. Now I'll fire it up and see what happens. Guess what, everyone? It works. It works pretty good, actually. Is it going to stay working? I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, the way it's adjusted right now, it's putting out a steady 15 amps. Now, for the time being, I'm going to leave it like that because I think the battery's a little low. But according to the owner's manual, they recommend a 6 amp charging rate, except for the winter, it should be cranked up to 10 amps for normal driving. And it can be adjusted for different driving habits. So that's probably what I'm going to do after a while. And the squealing noise is gone. I haven't heard it yet, so that's good. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.